The film begins in the year 2067, when Earth has been devastated by climate change. The economic disasters have caused revolutions worldwide, precipitating a nuclear war. Every major country around the world has gone dark, and only one city in the ruins of Australia has been able to hold out against these catastrophic changes. Two men are working in a utility tunnel to fix the city's nuclear power core, which is on the brink of a meltdown and can make the required fix in time. In return for their hard work, the workers are given oxygen credits for synthetic oxygen which allows them to survive, since every last plant has been cut. But this oxygen is tainted, and gradually causes a deadly affliction called the sickness. As the workers are going home after their shift, one of the protesters against the use of synthetic oxygen lights himself on fire. Ethan White, one of the workers at Chronicorp, the largest distributor of synthetic oxygen, cares for his wife Xanthi, who is afflicted with the sickness. To buy her a better oxygen mask, he takes the shift from another desperate worker. He returns home to give Xanthi the oxygen mask, and while the two are celebrating, she vomits blood in the mask. One day, while working in the tunnels, Ethan is taken by armed guards to the Applied Sciences Division of Chronicorp, and his guardian and work colleague Jude follows. The two are taken to the office of Regina Jackson, the Chronicorp Particle Division's CTO. She asks about Ethan's wife and explains that the sickness will eventually wipe out humanity. However, she tells Ethan that he can save humanity from it, and without answering his questions, sends him to the lab to be briefed. In the lab, scientists are working on Chronicle, a prototype time machine that was developed by quantum physicist Richard White, Ethan's late father. Regina and Billy Mitchell, the head scientist, explain that while working on Chronicle before Richard's death 20 years earlier, the scientists received a coded radio signal from 407 years in the future. Decoding the message reveals that the people from the future ask specifically to send Ethan to them. In hopes of preventing the extinction of humankind, Ethan is asked to be sent into the future. But they have only one shot of sending a human in the future due to the energy required to operate the machine, and they have no means of bringing him back. He refuses, as he resents his father for abandoning him and his mother, and he does not want to abandon his wife. Jude tries to help him see reason, and the fact that he can help Xanthi by finding a cure for her in the future. Ethan recalls how, on his eighth birthday, after being absent for most of the day, his father came home and forced on him a wrist device that bled his arm and was permanently attached to it, before abandoning the two. When Xanthi hears about it, she tells him not to use her as an excuse to run away, and tells him to do it for humanity's future. Ethan tries to remove the wrist device once more in frustration, but is unable to, and recalls how Jude found him after he was abandoned by his father. The following morning, he says a teary goodbye to Xanthi and promises to find a way back. He makes Regina promise to give Xanthi the first dose of the cure he finds it in the future. Billy gives Ethan a jumpsuit and tells him that because they don't know where he will land in the future, to avoid dangerous places, they will launch him higher in the sky. He also gives him a hand computer named Archie for navigation and communication and sending his vitals back in the past. Jude promises to look after his wife and Ethan is launched into the future. His eyes open in the sky as he's free falling into a forest. He comes to and finds his jumpsuit on fire. Ethan hastily removes everything, but his jetpack explodes. Once he recovers, Ethan is surprised to see breathable air and trees all around him. He tries to locate himself using Archie, but cannot find a link with a satellite. Using geography magnetic, Archie locates a structure, and Ethan walks towards it. He eventually finds the entrance to a bunker-like structure, but outside the structure a skeleton wearing his jumpsuit, a decaying Archie, and the wrist device, and with a bullet hole in its skull. Shocked by the discovery of his apparent death in the future, he tries to make sense of the situation and removes the wrist device from the skeleton. He tries to replay the other Archie's last recording, but its battery dies just as Ethan hears gunshots. Archie locates a distress signal and sends Ethan to follow, who finds metallic ruins at the site. At night, with the help of Archie, Ethan starts a fire and eats random sour berries that he found. Using the star formations, Archie determines that they are in the year 2474. He remembers a memory of his father telling him about stars, but a storm breaks out, and Ethan becomes sick from eating poisonous berries. He sees a man chasing him, who stabs him in the chest, causing him to pass out. Ethan wakes up to discover Jude, who followed him through time after his life readings, transmitted through the Chronicle, was failing, and had injected him with an antitoxin. But Ethan shows Jude his skeleton, revealing his life is still in danger. Together, they follow Archie's directions to another, still functional door. When Ethan goes out to investigate, a machine scans his eye and opens the door. The two walk into the dark and seemingly abandoned bunker, and the door closes behind them. They venture deeper and find a computer with Ethan's name, asking him to press enter to activate it. 
When he does, Ethan's wrist device is revealed to be a DNA analyzer, specifically made to grant him access, which takes his blood and reveals their surroundings to be a chronological lab, to which he now has access. In four hours, Chronicle will send him back to his timeline. Ethan is suspicious, thinking that he's following the footsteps of his dead counterpart, walking towards his eventual death, since the skeleton's DNA analyzer was also green. Jude is suspicious, and to convince him, Ethan goes through the logs of Chronicle. A holographic recording of Richard, which shocks Ethan, reveals that the Chronicle project was originally intended for the reactivation of an atmospheric monitoring station that would measure the Earth's atmosphere's breathability in the future and then transmit the data back to the past. When he first activated the machine, Richard was surprised to receive a message to send his son into the future. But when Regina asked for an immediate follow-up mission by sending Ethan into the future, Billy said it was impossible because safely sending living matter through time required an operational link from both sides, and the data showed a power failure in 2474. Immediately in the future, the Chronicle's activation triggers a malfunction in its nuclear power core, threatening to unleash a nuclear explosion before the countdown is completed. Once the power is fixed, Chronicle will tether to 2067 for approximately 30 seconds. When Jude prepares to fix the nuclear core, Ethan is confused that they did not brief him about the power failure and the fact that they sent Jude instead of a medic to save him. He wants to stay to understand the situation, but Jude forces him to fix the power core instead. Together, they make their way to the power core, which is located beneath their home city, but find it in a state of overgrown ruins. Finding the ruins littered with skeletons, Ethan concludes that the cure for the sickness was never found, and Earth recovered when humanity died. He goes to Xanthi's classroom to find a skeleton of hers, with his promise to return in her hand. In shock, Ethan recalls how when he and his mother went to look for Richard, they were mugged, and his mother was killed by oxygen thieves before Jude came to rescue him. Jude pulls him out of his shock. When Ethan becomes desperate to find a solution, Jude says maybe their eventual extinction is better, since no one has to suffer anymore. Ethan recognizes Jude's voice and lines from a recording he found on the decaying Archie taken moments before his future self was killed, and plays it for them. Jude, paranoid, reveals that he has a gun and points it at him. Though Ethan tries to calm him, Jude becomes paranoid and directs Ethan at gunpoint to the reactor's control room, claiming that he's saving Ethan from himself. They try to reroute the power but are unable to. Unable to activate the emergency override, Ethan decides to go inside the airlock and pull the lever while it is being depressurized, leaving Jude outside in safety. While choking, he pulls the lever and passes out just as power is restored. Jude breaks into the airlock and rescues him. With 37 minutes to spare, the duo return to the Chronicle Lab. While Jude is celebrating, Ethan finds another exit. Opening it, reveals the entryway next to his skeleton. Ethan suffers a nervous breakdown, finding himself repeating the mistakes of his future self. He replaces the decaying Archie's battery with his own and sees Jude shooting him in the future. He implores Jude to kill him now, which Jude refuses to do. Jude then confesses that there was no actual hope or plan of ever changing the future, and they can save themselves in the future. Refusing to believe that, Ethan tries to go through his father's logs on his eighth birthday, but Jude turns off the power. Ethan locks him in the room. Replaying Richard's logs, Ethan learns that his mission was a ruse. When Richard calls Ethan and his mother out to meet him, Regina reveals that she intends to flee from her dying time into the future, only with a chosen few to start again leaving the rest of humanity to die. But Richard maintained hope for humankind. To prevent its abuse, Richard had already fitted the time machine to Ethan's DNA. But Billy announced that the machine could be rigged to send a person into the future one way, which was done without Richard's authorization. Regina killed Richard. Jude was appointed by Jackson as Ethan's guardian to ensure that he would be sent forward in time to repair the power failure and stabilize the time portal. Once Ethan returned to 2067, Jackson would then have him killed. Jude breaks out of the room just as the final bit is played. Ethan accuses Jude of using him, but Jude thinks they were both used since Jude was very young back then. Though he tries to make him see his plan, Ethan is unconvinced and tries to shut the Chronicle down, but Jude moves to stop him. Jude repeats Archie's recording by fighting Ethan and pulling out his gun, but Ethan refuses to fight back. Jude, guilt-ridden, kills himself. Meanwhile, Regina prepares to send her chosen few into the future. When Ethan receives the ping from the past, he sends the Send Ethan White message to his father. As Regina prepares to shoot Ethan when he walks out of Chronicle, she instead receives a copy of Richard's recorded murder on Archie, hundreds of live jungle plants, and a farewell gift to Xanthi in the past, a purple flower. Ethan then destroys the Chronicle, 
which changes the timeline. In the past, Regina is arrested after Archie transmits the recording to a news station, and the plants are used to revitalize the planet. In the future, Ethan leaves a memorial for Jude. Returning to the Chronicle Lab, Ethan discovers that his corpse is gone. He rushes towards the city, and is happy to discover his formerly ruined city, inhabited and advanced with architecture more harmonious with the environment, and the movie ends.